Hey trainers, it's me Ryan Swag here. Uh, if you haven't noticed the giant red brick uh, appearing on the top of gyms lately, Groudon is now a raid boss in Pokemon Go. Kinda comes as a bit of a surprise to me since Gen 3 literally just released like a week ago. You know, so a little bit soon to have the mascot for Pokemon Ruby to appear on gyms, and in my opinion, like, I don't even have a Manetric yet. But, hey, <laughs> I don't run this game, you know, and uh, Groudon's here, people want to know how to counter them. So the moment I found out about this, I uh, started crunching the numbers here and came up with this Groudon counter graphic. Uh, unlike um, Pokebattler and other groups, I usually wait until the confirmed release of the Pokemon before working on these graphics because... Niantic could tweak things at the last minute, give them like a new move that we weren't expecting. Uh, I was expecting to switch out Earthquake with, uh, oh gosh, Precipice Blades? Yeah, I was expecting uh, them to give them Precipice Blades uh, instead of Earthquake, but they left it unchanged. And I was also expecting a 9% nerf, uh, the same nerf that Mewtwo and uh, ho, ho got. But they didn't do that either. So yeah, so I got busting on it. Uh, after going over the data, I came up with this generalized kind of counter graphic to help guide players in this experience, you know? Uh, so for the supreme option here, we've got Gyarados. Against all situations, against all Groudons, you're, you're going to be doing a lot better if you've got that brand spanking new waterfall hydro pump Gyarados, you know? And uh, another solid option, normally I don't feature the tanks, but ho ho uh, in this raid does extremely well, tanks all the different attacks. It's got a uh, immunity to your resistance to the solar beam. It's got a resistance to, you know, the earthquake and the, uh, the fire blast. So it's resisting all those attacks and it's hitting back with that solar beam. Then we got Dragonite here, which is similar to Ho-Oh in that it can tank basically all those attacks. It can take on solar beam, no problem. Uh, but doing a little bit, a little bit softer than Ho-Oh, uh, cause Groudon is carrying that Dragon Tail, which Dragonite isn't a, a big fan of. And then against all movesets, I decided to feature uh, Sceptile, a new Gen 3 boy with that Leaf Blade. Red doesn't mean that it's bad, it just means that it's glass. You know, high damage, low survivability. Not a bad pick, very decent pick if you have it. Um, I don't even have a Trico yet, right? <laughs> Niantic, uh, you're up against a not fire blast set. Articuno actually comes in with quite a bit of swag. It's a uh, pretty dang tanky, uh, much like Ho-Oh, and it's got some pretty solid, uh, pretty solid damage. So definitely a, a very worthwhile Pokemon for this raid. And uh, up here in Wisconsin, you know, it's uh, snowing like half the time, so you might even get you know the extra bonus right there catching that snow drift. Then moving on, we've got. The obvious executor, you know, earthquake, solar beam. It's a ground type Pokemon. You, 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 well, I'm not. What am I gonna do? Not feature executor against solar beam sets of Groudon. Venusaur is the better option. Kind of goes overlooked that Venusaur is both grass and poison type, giving it that immunity tier resistance to those grass attacks. So it's able to survive a lot more solar beams, which means it can uh, tank more solar beams and dodge them before getting hit with that death loop glitch. So especially against uh, Dragon Tail solar beam sets, packing in a Venusaur, even maybe a Vile Plume, might be a more viable option than your Executors. And now if you're up against not solar beam sets, so Earthquake and Fire Blast, uh, then Groudon actually comes in as a really good counter to Groudon. And then finally, you know, obviously, Vaporeon, the mainstay water type. Not as cool as Gyarados, no. Oh, oh, man, oh yeah, I'm ready for this. Best counter to Groudon, it's a Gar blue Tyranitar. Uh, Fire Blast resisted, Earthquake 2x resisted. Solar Beam, at least it's not weak to it, like a certain water type <laughs> that no one cares about anymore right here. Yeah, well. So everything weak to water, beware. Everything neutral hit by water, beware. This boy has a new fast move. If you're not familiar, the new fast move is Waterfall. What about ho -Oh? You know, ho is also a pretty good counter. Take out for a test drive. So that's a pretty simplified view of this fight, but I'm Ryan Swag, man. You know I got those graphs. So yeah, here I plotted out the performance of all of Groudon's, you know, kind of better counters against all of its movesets. Uh, these are at level 40. Um, they're against every moveset Groudon has, and their performances are averaged. And it doesn't incorporate dodging because... Hey, look, he made it. He dodged. He did... Uh, Oh, 
So yeah, that's why uh, I don't do dodging in these graphs, but I just wanted to specify it here, make it clear to you guys. And as always, these graphs will be available in an album link in the description of this video. Best counters, you can see here that TDO, total damage output, the percent of damage dealt before fainting, ho is leading the charge, but when you go to the damage per second, you know, the time to win. Who's going to do it the quickest? You got Gyarados up here. And uh, I also include the breakpoints. If you're not familiar with breakpoints, uh, I'll link an article below in the description as well. So yeah, so Gyarados, even level 32 Gyarados has better DPS than everything else. Starts to fall back uh, on the total damage output behind Dragonite and Articuno a bit, but still a very good option. And if you do want to invest in a Ho-Oh, uh, level 33.5 is a pretty solid area. And then, then you kind of fall into the mosh pit here. You know, you got Sceptile standing above them with that high DPS. I'll, I'll leave it to you guys to pick it out. But hey, this is using neutral weather. So this graph now is against all movesets still averaged, but this has a weather focus. To a lot of the Pokemon names, I have a weather type now. So Gyarados Rain. That is insane. If it's, <laughs> I rhymed. <laughs> if uh, Gyarados, if it's raining outside, Gyarados is just crazy in this fight. Yeah, Gyarados is just, it was already good. Now it's just stupid good. Where's normal Gyarados? Yeah, look all the way down here. Normal Gyarados. Yeah, now it's raining out. Um, if it's sunny outside or clear, you know, uh, then Ho-Oh is rocking it even harder on the DPS. I think its DPS is uh, better than a lot of the high DPS options at baseline, getting really close to Gyarados's DPS at baseline. So if you do have a powered up Ho-Oh with Solar Beam, then you're going to be doing a lot better in clear weather. You might be really appreciating it there. Uh, and then in snowy weather, Articuno jumps up heavily with its DPS. Uh, becoming a, a much better option all around. Uh, still a little bit wary of Fire Blast. You kind of don't want to use it against Fire Blast. Uh, now, if it's windy outside, I think that's like the rarest weather. Uh, oh, foggy. I, mean, I don't even think about foggy. But yeah, if it's windy outside, then Dragonite also ascends as being the best counter to all the different movesets. Higher DPS and TDO than Gyarados. A TDO that's starting to rival Ho-Oh. I mean, why wouldn't you want to use Dragonite in the wind? What a beauty. Now, getting into specific movesets. So, Gyarados... Once again, just better than everything. Actually, with Earthquake, because it does have that immunity tier resistance and Ho-Oh, Ho-Oh's fire typing actually knocks it down to a normal tier resistance. Gyarados is just best all around all the time against Earthquake. So Earthquake, Groudon, obviously easiest Groudon, especially if you got Gyarados. A level 32.5, you can even use a lower level Gyarados and it'll still be really good here. Uh, one thing I do want to point out about this graph and the proceeding graphs is that it uses Dragon Tail in all situations, preparing you guys for the worst case scenario. Do you want to be basing your decisions off the, the Wiffle Ball Bat or the Metal Baseball Bat, you know what I'm saying? We've got the Fire Sets. Vaporeon, still rocking it, uh, higher TDO than Gyarados, and you will see that Vaporeon will be lasting longer in fights and will be getting more damage in before fainting. Vaporeon isn't isn't down and out, right? It's just Gyarados is, is a lot sexier right now. And then we got Suicune all the way down here, and you can just ignore that because it's garbage. Now we got the, uh, the real hard one, right? The Solar Beam. Not just Solar Beam, this is Dragon Tail Solar Beam, so watch out. Be surprised to see Venusaur tanking it pretty well. Uh, very underrated Pokemon here. Vileplume and Venusaur do have that niche benefit I talked about earlier, where they got that immunity tier resistance to Solar Beam, which allows them to tank hits better, allows them to dodge more Solar Beams before being afflicted with the Death Loop glitch. Executor's got it pretty rough, actually, compared to Venusaur in this fight, where if it takes too many Dragon Tails, it gets put into that KO range, meaning that it can't dodge Solar Beam. And since Executor's best move is Solar Beam, uh, it, you know, it has to get the solar beam off and have the damage register before it gets hit by a solar beam itself. So it makes Executor a lot more, uh, a lot more, a lot less reliable in this fight, where Venusaur is going to be a bit more reliable. Venusaur. Watch out for it. Very competitive, even a level 29.5 Venusaur. Uh, me and my squad, we're planning on doing a four-man for Groudon. And dude, you better believe that all my Venusaurs are going to be coming out for this battle. And, you know, Articuno, because... Wisconsin. So yeah, so that's how to counter Groudon, right? Now, where's Groudon's place in the meta? Well, looking at the uh, results from Pokebattler.com, I found that in every tier 2 raid, Groudon's extremely good for the fights, using either its uh, Earthquake set or its Solar Beam set. 
that solar beam, just like with ho -Oh, allows it to function as this like pseudo grass type with a different set of resistances than what grass types have. So like Groudon pops up in a lot of weird places that you kind of don't expect it in. Uh, going to tier three raids, an unexpected place that you'll see Groudon actually being the greatest generalized counter for is Omastar. And uh, yeah, hitting it with the mud shot, which is super effective against Omastar. And it's got that huge monster solar beam, which is 4x, you know, doubled up super effective damage to Omastar. And Groudon doesn't really care about Omastar's rock attacks or ground attacks. Other tier three solos that Groudon helps out in is against Ninetales and against uh, Gengar. For doing a Ninetales solo, you're definitely gonna wanna have Waterfall Hydro Pump Gyaradoses, but it is doing a bit better than uh, than Golem does. And yeah, a cool thing to highlight with Groudon as a um, gym attacker is using Pokebattler's generalized uh, attacker rankings doesn't perfectly reflect the Jimmy meta, but it kind of gives you an overall kind of look at what's probably good. So yeah, overall, uh, level 40 versus level 40 with realistic dodging of special attacks. Uh, Groudon is the number two gym fighter, according to Pokebattler. Still can't compete with Mewtwo, but it's freaking Mewtwo, man. Like, now, we know that Groudon's like a pretty slow attacker, so obviously it's not getting boosted by that time to win. And when I looked at power, which is how many Pokemon that it can take on before fainting, it's only in the number five slot. So it's like, well, what's this guy doing in the number two slot overall? Well, that's actually potion, uh, uh, that's actually the potion efficiency, right? So if you're still feeling that potion drought, Groudon is the number two most potion efficient counter next to Lugia. Doing the job a bit faster than Lugia too, so... Pretty, pretty overall, very good Pokemon. And going back to overall, if he's sitting there in extreme weather, if you've got some clear skies out by you, uh, then he's just, he's just the best. Now looking at tier five raids, I already talked about how Groudon is a good counter into Groudon with its solar beam, but I didn't talk about its other uses for future tier five raids. Regirock and Registeel, both are weak to ground attacks. So obviously Groudon's gonna be kicking their butts and one thing that I found to be really freaking weird, Kyogre. Groudon overall is the number two counter in extreme weather without dodging. Groudon is there. This is the strongest water type Pokemon and Groudon, a ground type Pokemon is beating it down. Yeah, looking at the movesets investigating, it's because it's got waterfall and hydro pump. It's only got two like water type attacks. You know what I mean? full like water move set, it only has one. Blizzard does hit Groudon super effectively, but with Dragon Tail, Groudon doesn't really care about the Blizzard. So I think that's pretty interesting. You know, a lot of people are saying like, oh man, they probably did Groudon first instead of Kyogre because people don't want, you know, they don't want Kyogre making the Groudon fight too easy. Uh, sorry, I guess the shoe's on the other foot because Groudon is making the Kyogre fight way easy. I mean, against the Hydro Pump sets, Okay, <laughs> against the Hydro Pump sets, Groudon still doesn't care. Uh, the Double Water set though, it, it kind of cares. So yeah, so that's my uh, overview on Groudon, how to counter it, you know, its uses in the meta. Groudon's pretty dang good. I'm still not fully convinced Niantic knows how to balance their game, and I still don't think that they're fully in touch with their player base or the Pokemon legacy. I know just last week I was praising them for how they did slacking and how, you know, players really appreciate the nerf and, you know, the nod to the legacy of slacking with the nerf. Uh, but with Groudon, like, not only is the raid, to me, it feels way too early for such a powerful Pokemon. I would have been a lot better with the Regis coming out sooner. Picking Groudon as the first pick, very strange. And then another thing that was kind of upsetting to me is we got this weather... Uh, system in Pokemon Go. And if you're not familiar with the main series games, Groudon is like the sun earth god. You know, uh, his whole deal is that when he was awakened, he caused it to be sunny all the time. And every time you'd fight in a Pokemon battle after Groudon was awakened, it would be clear outside, you know, given a bonus to fire type attacks and uh, making solar beam hit harder and faster, right? So, they didn't include that. If they made it so that every uh, Groudon raid that you did had clear weather, or like there was a high chance of the fight specifically being clear, 
Uh, I, I would have appreciated that. Uh, I know that they made like a announcement or there was some letter out that said that they're not going to globally change weather in game uh, specifically for events and stuff. And I can appreciate that, but changing the weather specifically for the fight, especially against Kyogre and Groudon, like, man, that's a really the, huge missed opportunity. I feel kind of let down that we didn't have it. I can cry forever, right? So yeah, so now you guys know how to counter on and uh, how dang cool it is. If you like that content and you want to see more of it, then hit that subscribe button. Uh, I also do a stream every Thursday on the Twitch channel Swag Tips at 7 p.m. Central Time where I cover a specific meta-relevant topic. So if you've got any questions you want to ask me about the meta game or anything in Pokemon Go in general, uh, feel free to pop in there. I then post those stream recordings onto YouTube, so there will be, you know, weekly content coming onto the channel, unless my stream sucked really bad, you know? Uh, and every now and then like this, if I want to cover a topic earlier, make a video, I'll post it on there too. So, swag tips. I'm pushing for the subs a little bit because I'm still under a thousand subs! The whole reason why I started this channel was to put it into an audio-visual format. I felt that me writing articles for, for, for Game Press and, and all my infographics were kind of restricted by the medium. And I want players to play the game better, to understand it more, and have a better time. So tell your kids, tell your wife, tell your husbands, because I'm giving swag tips to everyone out there. You're not real internet trash if you don't get that reference, y'all. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you want me to cover any other topics about the metagame, also comment below, because I I I'm pretty responsive to that. You know, I'm, I'm baby YouTube, so you know I'm double responsive to that. You know what I'm saying, man? <laughs> We're looking for you.